Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. You know, many people think the battle between good and evil is a battle between two equal forces. But light never loses to darkness. Turn on any light in any room, any dark room, and you can clearly see that light always overpowers darkness. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I was afraid of the dark. Were you afraid of the dark when you were a kid? Probably so. Why is that, you know? Why is it when we're kids and we're afraid of the dark? Because we're naturally afraid of the unknown. That's what humans do, you know? That's what we call human nature. Because, you know, when humans, when we can't see things, when we don't know for sure what's out there, we get scared. The interesting thing about this is that when we don't know what's out there and, and when, when we're scared of it, we can start to imagine things. We can start to imagine things that aren't there. And usually, what do we, what do we imagine that's there? We imagine the worst things possible, right? Ridiculous things, things that aren't even realistic. Like monsters under your bed, or, or ghosts, or gremlins, or goblins, or vampires, or werewolves. Things that we've never even seen before in the light. Well, today I want to talk about spiritual warfare. And more specifically, I want to discuss the reality of the devil. The prince of darkness. But I'm going to explain how we can overcome our fear of this evil, of this darkness. So that we can understand that just like light defeats darkness, the devil of this world isn't as scary as we imagine him to be. And ultimately the purpose of this video is to teach how the forces of evil and the forces of darkness can be destroyed by anybody. Hey, you don't need to be a priest. You don't need to possess some kind of special power. But anybody, even you, watching this video can become a spiritual warrior and conquer the darkness of this world. Stick around and I'll explain how. You know, I want to begin with a Bible verse. You know, and, and, I'm, and I'm always reading out of the King James Bible. But Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not against flesh and blood, but the principalities, against powers, against the rule, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, many people today think that we, we need to fight this evil person or, or that evil person. Or, or that wicked organization over there, we need to stop that. Or, or, or this corrupt government that we're under, you know. But the Bible tells us that our fight is not against flesh. flesh. You know, it's, it's not a flesh and blood fight. It's not an enemy in our physical world that we're fighting. It's an enemy in the spiritual world. And that enemy is Satan. That enemy is the devil. The prince of darkness. So the first thing we need, we need to understand is that there's a difference between the physical world and the spiritual world. For example, you know, there's certain things that you can see. But there's also certain things that you can't see. You can see this cup of water. That's in the physical world. You can see me. You can hear my voice. But what are some things we can't see? Like love. Love is a concept in our head. You know, does anybody know what love looks like? Sure, we can witness acts of love. But the actual thing that we call love, it's a concept. 
it isn't a physical thing, you know, like, you can't tell me how many molecules, how many atoms are in, that compose love. Because it's in the spiritual realm. We know it exists, but it's not in the physical world. You can't touch it. You can't see it. You can't hear it. You can't quantify it. Well, in the same way, that is where God exists. That is where the devil, the prince of darkness, resides, you know, in the spiritual realm, in the abstract, not of this physical world. So you see, what is darkness? You know, we need to understand what is evil. What is the devil? You know, most people understand at least the concept of the devil and, and the concept of God. They understand that the two are sworn enemies, you know? They're against each other. Another way to phrase it is right versus wrong, or simply light versus darkness. You know, there's a false belief out there that these two forces, light and darkness, God and the devil, are, against, are, are equal with each other. That they almost need each other. That one could not exist without the other. Well, I'm going to explain to you from the Bible how that's wrong. You know, even though both the devil and God exist in the spiritual realm, they are not of the physical world as we know that. We can see that we can't see. We can't taste them. We can't touch them. We can't feel them. We can't hear them with our senses. And God and the devil are not equal. You know, the Bible says, in the beginning, God. That's it. Just God. God can exist without the devil. Think of all the stories that you've heard, all the books that you've read. Most of them have what's called a moral of the story, right? The moral of the story is this. This is the lesson we're supposed to learn, you know? And it's supposed to teach us what's right and wrong. And usually, you know, good always overcomes evil, right? 60% of the time it works every... Never mind, it's a joke. Okay, anyway, back to my, back to my lesson here. I want you to think of all the, all the zombie apocalypse movies coming out nowadays, right? All the TV shows, you know, I, The Walking Dead. I love to watch The Walking Dead. You know, um, basically what these stories, what these films are portraying is simply a, a physical adaptation of what's, in the, of what's in the spiritual world. What's spiritual reality. In other words, they're trying to bring the spiritual world into the physical world. Or they're trying... They're trying at least, you know, they're doing it in a way that makes it almost seem like it's make-believe, you know, like it's, oh, this is fantasy, that's sci-fi, that's not real, but it is real. What we need to understand if we're going to fight a spiritual battle is that these forces are very real. You know, now I'm not saying that there's physically zombies walking around there, that there's physically the walking dead, right? But in a spiritual realm... That exists, okay? Let me explain. You know, in, in a twisted way, these shows, these zombie shows and things like this, they're, they're actually making a mockery of the spiritual world. They're making a mockery of you and me, you know? In other words, they're making fun of real-life zombies. I mean, the devil is literally laughing in the faces of people who are watching these shows, and they don't even realize that these shows are making fun of us. Right? Now you say, Sean, that's not me, man. I'm woke. I'm wide awake. I have a spirit. I have a soul. I know this. I'm a spiritual fighter. I'm a spiritual warrior. You know, but the question is, how do you know that? How do you know that your spirit is not in darkness? Because here's the thing. Some people are so consumed by darkness, they don't even realize it. Think about it. Does a zombie really know that they're a zombie? Does a person who has never seen the light before, who was born in darkness, who lives in darkness their whole life, do they really know the difference between light and darkness? Are you sure you're not one of these people? Because these people could be anybody. 
You know, remember, you can't see the spiritual world. So you could literally be walking and talking with somebody who is breathing, who's flesh and blood, who is alive in the physical world, but inside of them, they're spiritually dead. They can be your co-workers, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your wife, your husband. It could even be you. Okay, Sean, I'll bite. How, how do you know who's dead or alive, man? How do you know who is spiritually alive? Well, first off, we need to know who the devil is. You know, how does this darkness operate? Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 17 says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. You see, the devil, also known as Satan, was once an angel called Lucifer. And Lucifer rebelled against God. You know, he's a fallen angel. God, God, um, anyway. Lucifer is the most beautiful of all angels in heaven. Okay, God created the angel Lucifer for his own pleasure, you know. He's the most magnificent angel in all of heaven. You know, and he, he speaks with the most beautiful voice. The most beautiful maladies you can ever hear. His voices are as if they're instruments. So, you know, Satan is not this ugly red goblin looking thing with a, with a tail and, and, a, and a pitchfork. No, no, on the contrary, Satan is like a $100 bill, a counterfeit $100 bill. It looks great, looks pleasing to the eyes. You want to go pick it up, right? You want to say, hey... I got me a hundred dollar bill. But basically the fact is, Satan is so gorgeous that his number one goal is to get everybody to worship him instead of God. You know? And if you're not careful, you can easily be worshiping Satan instead of God. And you wouldn't even know it. Let me phrase it another way so I could really get this point across. This is important. You could be living your whole life a certain way, right? You can think you're doing good. You may think um, the way you act is, is right and godly, you know? and But you're actually believing Satan's lies and not even knowing it. You see, what happened to the angel Lucifer was that his beauty and his magnificence, it all went to his head. He thought he was so great that he, he became filled with pride and he rebelled against God because he was angry that he couldn't be God. He was jealous of God. He wanted to be God. But you know what? Satan also knows that he can't be God. He can't defeat God. And he knows one day God's going to destroy him and send him to hell. And anybody who rebels against God alongside Satan, he's going to send them to hell with him. So, Satan's number one goal is to bring us, the humans, down with him. He wants to trick us into following him and rebel against God. But he also knows that nobody's going to willingly rebel against God, you know. So, so he has to trick us. That's why he's called the great deceiver. So the question is... What do I have to do, Sean? <laughs> how do I know that I'm not rebelling against God? How do I know? How can I be sure that I'm not being tricked by Satan? Well, it's simple. It really is simple. God has given us the Holy Bible. God's Word. And everybody who accepts the truth of God's Word, the Bible, believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's what the Bible says. That Jesus Christ is the Lord. And he's alive, spiritually. The person who believes this, who believes on the Bible, believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because everyone who believes in the Bible, believes in the Bible by faith. And when you have faith in God, God gives you the Holy Spirit inside your physical body. You become alive, spiritually, with a spirit inside of you. 
God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. You see, the Bible teaches that everybody who accepts the Lord Jesus not only has their sins forgiven, but they also receive a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which, which will give you eternal life and you'll live forever. Now, it doesn't mean your physical body is going to live forever, but the Spirit inside of you, that will live forever. You say, but wait a second, Sean, how do I know, how do I know that the Bible is true? How do I know that the Quran's not true, or, or, or the Book of Mormon, or, or um, any of these other uh, um, holy texts out there? How do I know that the Bible's the right one? You know, remember, the, the, the devil's a deceiver, the great deceiver. He's an expert liar, and he's a master counterfeiter. You know, and, and he uses deception to trick us. You see, Satan knows God's word very well. And he... And he has very expertly crafted and manufactured many fake religious texts out there. And, and not just religious books, but also spiritual philosophies and, and ideologies um, and to confuse us, right? Um, but God is not the author of confusion. Um, you heard the phrase said before, there are many paths to enlightenment, right? All roads lead to Rome, you know. This is a lie of the devil. It's the lie of Satan, you know. In fact, he's so deceptive. He has, he's even convinced people out there to believe that there is no God at all. <laughs> that none of these holy texts are true. None of the philosophies are true. And no religion's true. You say, Sean, are you telling me that you found the needle in the haystack? How arrogant can you be to claim that you have found the correct holy text, the text of God, out of thousands of different holy books, out of hundreds of different religions and philosophies and ideologies? You mean to tell me you found the right one? Listen, this video is not designed to prove to you why the King James Bible is the word of God preserved in English. You know, I'll just say this. The only way you know if you're spiritually alive and you're not as zombie is that you know God. And you believe in God's word. Now you say, okay, Sean, I believe the Bible. I believe in God's word. I believe in Jesus, okay? But, but how do you overcome the darkness of this world? You know, you, you said you'd teach us how to defeat evil. I want to learn how to be a spiritual warrior. That's why I clicked on your video. Well, you know what? I'll give you a hint. It's a trick question. Trick question. You see, nobody can defeat the devil. What? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You? What is this? Clickbait, man? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, no man can defeat the devil, but God can. God can defeat the devil. You see, not until Jesus returns, I mean, the, the devil's going to rule and reign in this physical world. You know, there's nothing we can do to stop it until Jesus comes back and Jesus defeats him. All right. But what we can do while we're here is we can resist him. We can fight back. Remember, only God can defeat Satan. But until that happens, we can resist him. And even better is we can become a spiritual warrior and make sure that Satan doesn't accomplish his, accomplish his mission of deceiving people and taking him and taking, or excuse me, taking us to hell with him, okay? Sean, teach me how to do this, man, okay? Look, 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 the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from thee. You see, if we submit ourselves to God, we serve him, we obey his commandments, that's how we resist the devil. And when we do this, the devil will flee from us. He'll run away. So, you know, it's important that we find other believers. Other, other believers of this book. Other believers of Jesus Christ. Just, just like in all the zombie movies you watch. The people who are alive need to stick together and, and band together against the zombies, right? Because when you band together, the devil not only can't overtake you, but he'll actually flee from you and run away because he's scared. Now, of course... Our first step is to believe in God. We have to trust the Bible. 
and our faith in any other religion or any other philosophy or any other holy book out there other than the Bible means you're as good as dead. You're as good as dead. You're spiritually dead. You're a zombie. Okay, so our first and most important thing that we need to do if we want to be a spiritual warrior is to accept the fact that the Bible is God's word. Okay, now I'm not going to explain th that's out of the scope of this video why it's God's word. It's out of the scope, but you know what? The first step is if you don't accept this book, if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're going to remain in darkness. Okay, you're going to remain a zombie. You you will never be spiritually alive. You will remain connected to the matrix, and you and you can just go back to sleep right now. Turn this video off, and you can wait for the destruction of your soul after your body dies. You will be cast in the hell with the devil. But if you want to fight this spiritual battle, if you want to even have a chance at resisting the devil of this world and fighting back against the wickedness and the darkness, you must accept the Bible and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now, if you're still having trouble accept this, accepting this, let me share with you this, this scripture. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is your starting point, okay? If you're not afraid of God, if you're not afraid of hell, fire, of God sending you to hell and, uh, for all eternity with the devil, you know, if you think you'll just, you'll be just fine in this lifetime and, and after you die without believing in God, without believing in the Bible, or, or if you just want to maybe pick and choose little things out of the Bible that you think are right, you know, and you don't want to put 100% of your faith in it. 100% of your faith in Jesus, then you're just going to remain in darkness. You're going to remain in dark. You will never be a spiritual warrior. You'll be spiritually dead. Okay? You, you will stay asleep. And you know what? One day when you, when you die, God's going to punish you along with Satan. Now, if that doesn't put the fear of God in you, I don't know what will. You know, you say, okay, Sean, look, listen, man, I, I accept the Bible. And, you know, I want to be a spiritual warrior. I want to resist the devil. But the wickedness of this world scares me. You know, my friends will laugh at me. Society will outcast me. The devil will seek to destroy me. I have to admit, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm in fear of the evil and the darkness of this world. And I agree with you, you know, the prince of darkness can be scary. The unknown. Not knowing what it's all about. You know, this world can be a scary place. Not being able to see the future. Not knowing what, what um, happens after death. There's no short list of things that we as humans can be afraid of. In fact, most people are afraid of public speaking more than death. But let's see what the Bible says about this. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24, the Bible says, Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart, for consider how great things He hath done for you. You know, the Bible says we are not to fear the devil, but only fear God. Only fear the Lord. Bible says all throughout the Bible God teaches us not to fear anything of this world nothing of the physical world don't fear another man don't fear the government don't fear Satan don't fear death itself easier said than done I know without God it's impossible right but with faith in God it's possible you know to overcome all your physical fears you know listen if you fear the devil it's only going to empower the devil to it for him to attack you, okay? He attack you even harder because you start imagining all kinds of wicked things that he can do to you. And, and, um, and you, you'll even start imagining that he has more power than he actually does. And, and, and you're, you're, scared. You're, you're going to be so scared and frightened that it'll be easier for him to just attack you, you know? Just like a child is afraid of the dark. You're going to start hallucinating things that aren't even possible, like imagining the devil is more powerful than God, or he's equal with God. You know, it's stupid. It's a joke, right? You know, just like they, they tell you, you know, like if you were to encounter a bear in the wilderness, right, you're supposed to make yourself big and tall and strong and ah, right? Because if you show that you have no fear, you can actually scare the bear away, right? But, but if you run away from that bear and fear, he's going to get you and he's going to destroy you. You know, you say, Sean, that doesn't make sense. You know, shouldn't we fear the devil since he wants to destroy us? 
And why would we fear God? I thought God was pure love, man. Look, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Stop trying to rationalize everything. You know, just put your faith in God. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 41, 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You say, Sean, I still don't get it, man. I thought God was love. Why, you know, why should I fear him? Look, you're right. God is love. You know, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 says, Then this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, He that loveth, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, And we have known and believed the love of God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. You know, the Bible says that God is pure light. In him there's no darkness at all. So, you know, why would we fear God? You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, he gave us the answer. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus says, Fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You see, God has ultimate power over not just your body, but your soul as well. So it's, it's not that... You see, God actually has power. We're not imagining it like, like it's not something we imagine. It's written down for us in the scriptures, you know, and that's something to be afraid of, real power, the power to so throw your soul in hell, you know, now, now, now that it's, it's not that we're scared of God hurting us, you know, that he's not going to use his power to hurt us, you know, the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, you know, so we, we, you can see how it should scare us of going to hell if we're not saved, if we don't know who God is, if we're spiritually dead, right? If you're spiritually dead, you need to get saved. You need to believe the Bible. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But what us of us who are already um, saved, who already believe in God, we're already spiritually alive. We need to fear God's wrath upon those who are asleep. Those of them who do not believe in God. It's a very fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. And also, why shouldn't we fear the devil, you know? Because not only can the devil hurt us, but he wants to hurt us, right? So, you know, it makes no, it's hard to make sense of why shouldn't we be scared of him? Well, the reason we shouldn't scare the devil, or one reason at least, is Romans chapter 8 verse 31, which says, if God be for us, who can be against us? I mean, if God's on our side, 1 Corinthians 15, 55 says, Oh, death, where is thy, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? You know, if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, nothing can kill you. If God be for us, who could be against us, right? Sure, the devil can destroy our bodies. But that's the end of his power. You know, God will just resurrect us from the dead and we'll be in heaven. With a glorified body, with a with an immortal body, you see. The devil's power compared to God is nothing. You know, it's, it's like comparing a newborn baby uh, versus like the heavyweight champion of the world. It's it's not even a comparison, right? You see, the devil's power only goes so far as God allows it to go. You know, people ask, "Well, if God's so powerful, how come there's so much evil in the world? You know, how can the devil get away with what he does?" Well, consider this, Job chapter 1, verse 12 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. You know, Satan has no power to destroy our souls. Okay, only our body. You know, God simply allows Satan to exercise his power in this physical world. But remember, Satan has no power, ultimate power. Right? He only has power so far as God allows him. 
And, and especially he has no power in the spiritual world. But, Sean, why wouldn't we be afraid of something that can destroy our body? Right? I mean, that's a legitimate question. If, if Satan can, can attack our bodies in the physical world, shouldn't we be scared of that? Well, remember, Jesus said, Fear not him who can destroy the body only, but who can destroy both the body and the soul in hell. So we need not fear the devil, right? It's our human nature to sin, you know? It's our natural instinct. It's our flesh and blood instinct to worry about our body's well-being, you know? We fear getting harmed physically, you know? But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. See, we have two things. We have a natural man, a physical flesh and blood body, which is our flesh and blood, which is sinful, okay? And, and, and on the other hand, we have the Spirit of God, which is inside of us, which is indestructible, which is not sinful. It's holy. It's perfect. It's the Spirit of God. So you can see that if the Spirit of God lives inside of our physical body, you know, we need not fear the darkness because we know that God who lives in us is full of light, you know, and, and, and God who's full of light is able to defeat darkness every single time. You know, first John chapter four, verse four says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, you see that God who is in us is greater than the darkness, than the devil, every single time, you know. So even though our natural instincts is to fear death, you know, the way that we can overcome this is through faith in God. And by faith, we know with all our heart that He is more powerful than the darkness. And it's not that we are more powerful. Our flesh and blood has no power, but it's God who lives in us. And this brings me to my final point. You know, I know, and I know this is getting to be a long message, but it's an important message. And my final point is this, and, and God bless you if you're still listening this far in the message. You know, you're a spiritual warrior already. <laughs> but anyways, quick recap. You know, so we've learned that God is light. The devil is darkness. And these are two spiritual forces that are against each other. But we also learn that light always overcomes darkness, so we need not fear it. But we also learn that we can't defeat the darkness. We can only resist it and stand against it. So now I'm going to teach on how we can be an offensive threat. You know, how can we attack? How can we strike back? Because, you know, we know the devil does not fight fear. You know, he's not going to open himself up for an attack easily, right? If, if we're going to do, or excuse me, if we're doing what we need to be doing, following God's commandments and walking in the light as he is in the light, the devil's going to flee from us, right? But, you know, just because we can't attack him directly head on doesn't mean that we can't fight back. So think about it. I want you to uh, think about this question. What do you do if you can't attack an enemy head on? If you can't attack an enemy head on, how do you attack him? Well, you can attack their supply lines, right? You can attack their reinforcement routes. Um, and most importantly, and here's the key. I'm going to give you the key right now. This is gold. You can get their soldiers to change sides and fight for you instead. Now, this is the number one way to hurt the devil, you know, is to wake people up. You know, there's an antidote out there to this zombie apocalypse. There's a way to turn the zombies back into living people. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the antidote. You know, the Bible says that God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. What's His promise? Eternal life. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us onward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. You know, it's not God's will that, that anybody uh, die and go to hell. You know, he wants everybody to wake up, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and go to heaven. You know, regardless of what you've done in your life, that's what he wants for you. 
So if you want to be a spiritual warrior in this fight against darkness, there's only one way to do it. You have to put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6. Um, I'll start in verse 13 to verse 17, which reads, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye should be able to stand and quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You know, the Bible says you need to put on your, whole, your, your, your spiritual armor and stand. Stand fast, because with your armor, the devil can't stop you. It's the, uh, the Bible says you'll quench all the fiery, dar the fiery darts of the wicked. Anything the devil throws at you, you stop it. If you're saved, you know, because even if he kills your body, even if he destroys your body, the Lord will save your soul because the devil can't touch your soul, right? So do you want to fight the devil? Do you want to fight the wickedness of this world? Do you want to be a spiritual warrior? Well, you need to get out there and open your mouth boldly and wake people up. You know, um, what's that verse that says, uh, open thy mouth boldly and, and make known the mysteries of the gospel. How are you going to wake people up? You need to preach them the gospel. You need to preach the Bible to them. Get them to believe the Bible. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 says, Here in our love is made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Um, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. And, and Jesus said what? Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you, right? And Jesus also said, if you love me, keep my commandments. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. You know, too many people think that, you know, following this book, following the commandments of God is a chore. You know, friends, it's not a chore. It's a weapon. It's a weapon that God has given us to shine the light in the darkness. But here's the thing. Is a blind person afraid of the dark? No. Why? Because they've grown accustomed to it. They've never seen anything other than darkness. They've never seen. You know, I remember that movie, The Matrix. He opened up his eyes. He's like, wow, why do my eyes hurt? And, and Morpheus tells Neo, he says, because you never used them before. You know, right? So, so they're used to it. It doesn't bother them because they've never known the light. You know, have you ever been sleeping at nighttime, you know, in, in, in bed, and you're, and you're in a nice deep sleep, and, and then all of a sudden somebody flicks the lights on and, and shouts at you, wake up, wake up, you know, and, and then they go and shake you out of your sleep. It's not easy to sleep when they're doing that, right? Well, that's exactly what we need to be. That's what the Bible calls us to do. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 5 says, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. You know, our job, our duty, our purpose in life is to wake people up out of their deep sleep, to give them the antidote, to give them Jesus Christ. How are you going to wake anybody up, though, if you're still in your pajamas? If you're an armchair Christian, if you're a lazy-minded Christian, maybe you're not lazy, okay? But maybe you're just scared. Maybe you just have fear inside of you. Maybe you fear the devil more than you fear God, more than you fear the Lord. How are you going to wake anybody up if you're half asleep yourself? How are you going to show somebody else to fear the Lord if you don't fear the Lord? How are you going to show somebody the light if your light is just so dim you can barely see it and and you can't shout you don't shout you just hey wake up hey wake up you just whisper to him you gotta shout wake up the kingdom of god is now repent ye and believe the gospel i don't know about you guys but i'm sick and tired of being scared of the boogeyman you know he doesn't even exist right it's not real. It's all in our imaginations. 
Put on the whole armor of God. Put your whole faith 100% in the Bible. And you have nothing to be scared of. You have nothing to fear. What are you going to fear? What are you going to fear? <laughs> Somebody's going to make fun of you? Are you going to fear? Oh, you're going to miss the next uh, episode of Walking Dead on TV be instead of reading the Bible? <laughs> I mean, what are you afraid of? You're afraid you might actually have to do something. You might actually have to suffer for Christ. You might actually have to die for Christ. Is that what you're afraid of? Are you afraid of death? Don't you remember how powerful God is? You don't remember how God resurrected Jesus from the grave? How he parted the, the Red Sea for Moses and the Israelites? You don't remember God said, let there be light. And there was light. You don't remember how powerful God is? Listen, spiritual warriors, if you want to fight back against the darkness, the devil, who's been beating you down your whole life, I'll tell you how to do it. Turn somebody who's in the darkness to Christ. Get them the light inside of them. Whatever false religion that they're believing in, whatever false philosophy or ideology they're believing in, tell them the truth. Shout it. Wake them up. Let them see the light inside of you. Let them see God inside of you. How are you going to do that? You have to obey the commandments. Show them the way. Show them who Jesus is through example. Wake them up. I promise you, nobody who, who wakes up is going to be mad at you for waking them up. The only person who's going to be mad at you is Satan, the devil, the prince of darkness, and to hell with him, right? I mean, he, remember, he tried to trick you. He tried to kill you. He wanted you to rebel against God and get sent to hell with him. To hell with him. I hate him. God hates him. You should too. So put on your armor, soldiers, spiritual soldiers. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's right now. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The devil wants to take souls to hell with him, as many as he can take. And as long as I have breath in my lungs, I'm going to make sure that everybody around me Here's, here's the words of the Lord. Uses my voice and my lungs to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's my message. You want to destroy the darkness of this world? You want to be a spiritual warrior? You need to get on the Lord's side. Because He's the only one who can defeat darkness. So we need to get out there and hit the devil where it hurts him the most. Where he has no power. The soul, the soul of a man, the soul of a woman, the soul of a child. Get, a, get the person to give their soul to God. Give your soul to God and make sure everybody around you, everybody you know, everybody you come in contact with, everybody you can speak to isn't deceived by the devil. Wake them up. Don't let the devil deceive them. You know, because we were once deceived. I was once deceived. Show them the light. Show them the light that Jesus is God and, and, and Jesus is the only way to eternal life. John chapter 11 verse 25 says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. You know, we don't have to go out and conquer this physical world with guns or politics. No. The way to overcome the darkness is through the light. The light of Jesus Christ. You know, anyways, um, it's a long message. Uh, I hope this message reached you well. Um, and I hope that you learned something. And I hope you realize that the best way that you can fight back as a spiritual warrior... Is, is to hit the devil where it hurts him the most and, and to win souls to Christ.
It's not a physical battle we're in. You know, stop stressing over the things of this world, over the physical things of this world. Stop stressing about money. Stop stressing about um, this organization and politics. You know, it's all about the soul. Get people to believe in this book. Get people to believe in the gospel. That's how you fight back on the enemy. Anyway, um, hope this message reached you well. And uh, as usual, I'm going to give God the last word. And I, I love you all. I'll be praying for every single one of you. And uh, until next time, God bless. I'm going to read from uh, the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. God bless. Jesus says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen.